This Bio 102 video will show how to analyze the alignments uh, of genes in the FASTA files for the Bioinformatics and Genomics Lab. So here I've got a FASTA file for the ANTP gene and I need to open it in MEGA so that we can analyze the alignment. So here's the icon for the MEGA program and get that started. Okay, from the MEGA program I go to the alignment button, push that and go to edit build alignment. Click on that and I want to retrieve a sequence from a file. Click OK and double click on the gene file. All right now I want to be able to see a little bit more of this so I'm going to bring it up here and make it stretch across the screen. It doesn't have to go down to the bottom because I've already got all of the strains showing. So a little bit about the window here. Over here on the left are the names of all the strains. The first couple letters of the names refer to which species the strain is from. So if the first couple letters are PS, then it is a pseudo obscure gene, or elite strain, excuse me. Uh, and if the first few letters are MIR, then it is a Drosophila Miranda strain. This is all the same genes. It's all for the ANTP gene. Um, you see you've got all the bases. They're color-coded for you, so it's very easy to see differences. Uh, as you go across the top here, notice there's these asterisks, but they're not everywhere. So here's a place where, where there is no asterisk here on this top row. And if you look, everywhere where there's an asterisk, the base is the same for every single strain. Here, where there's no asterisk, the bases are different for these three Miranda strains. And that's true no matter, even if the difference was among pseudo-obscura strains, um, you'd still lose the asterisk when the, there's a base that's different in one of the strains. Other things that are important are this X, if you want to delete something, you select it and click that X. For instance, if I wanted to delete the sequence for this whole strain, I'd select it by clicking on the strain name, and then click on that X there over towards the right, but I don't want to do that, so I'm going to deselect that strain. Also, this W, when you need to realign, you can use that W there. Okay, this, if I kind of scan across this gene, there are no indels in this gene, so I can't show you what that looks like, but if there was a deletion, instead of one of the letters, there would be a white box with a dash in it, is how a deletion is uh, indicated. These ends, what that means is that there is a nucleotide there, but for some reason the sequencing reaction did not come up with a definitive answer for what that uh, base is. So we, we know there's a nucleotide there, but we don't know which one it is. That, so it's an unknown nucleotide. That's what N means. And we need to look at just how many ends and deletions there are in each strain. Um, because if there's too many, uh, the statistics program will ignore all regions where there's an N in one of the strains. So the more ends there are, the more of the gene we're not analyzing. So what we're going to do is for each strain count how many ends. So there's no ends at all at this screen. Here one easy way to count is to select the first one and count as you go across with the arrows. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, and here in Notepad, a little smaller so we can still see the genes, I've got the 14 strains enabled. That was the second strain. I don't care what the name of the strain, but we counted 11 ends. Here in the third, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. Ends there. Okay, and I don't want to take the time in the video to count all the ends, but I do want to show you sometimes 
I happen to know way over here at the end. And I think the bigger one was here. Way there. So here there's some stretches of a lot. You don't want to have to count all those ends by hand. So what you can do is if you select one base like that end right there, over here in the bottom left corner is the site number of, of that base, with one being the first base all the way on the left. So that's 708 bases in. Go over here to the base right before the first end. Not the first end, but before it. Because think about it. If, if I wanted to count that one, I'd count 620 minus 619 gives me the one that's there. So if I want to count all of these, say 708 minus 619 is 98 plus 199. So I'd put that, uh, did I do that right? It was 08, sorry, 88 plus 1 is 89. So that's 89 ends right now, right there, and that is the 13th, so 89 there for the 13th strain. And like I said, I don't want to take the time to count them all right now, so I actually have here the results once everything's counted. So here's the total number of ends for each strain. If, if it's blank, there were zero. And what you need to do is look at separating out the pseudo-obscure strains from the Miranda strains. So the Miranda strains are only the last three. So we've got 11 pseudo-obscure strains. Pick the one that has the most ends. So these three all have the same. So they have a total of 39 ends. And then the other piece of information you need is how many bases long the entire gene is. So go to the very last base and it says it's 1179. So what I want to know is what percentage of 1179, 39 is. And that equals 3%. So my question is, is I'm, will I lose more data if I take out, if, if I leave this strain in with all those ends, I'm losing 3% of the data. If I delete that strain, how much of the data just for pseudo-obscure am I losing? Well, I'd be losing 1 out of 11 strains, and 1 out of 11 is about 9%. So I'm losing less data by leaving that sequence in with the ends than I am by deleting the whole strain. So I'm going to leave that strain there. That was the, the most ends, so I know all of my pseudo-obscure genes uh, uh, strains are good. So leaving all of those strains. Now these Miranda, wow, that 191, that's a lot bigger. So 191 out of 1179 is 16%. But I only have three Miranda strains, so if I delete one of them, I'm deleting one out of three, which is, of course, 33%. So even though there are 191 ends in that strain, I'm still better leaving those ends in, even though that means none of those nucleotides will be considered in the statistics, than I am by deleting the strain. Again, that was the most, so if I'm leaving that in, I'm certainly leaving the others in, so I'm done. Now, if this had been above 33%, I'd delete that strain, and then, um, then go to the next one down. At that point, though, I'd only have two Miranda stra strains, so I'd be comparing the percent of ends to 50%, not 33%. Okay. And there were no indels here at all, so I don't have to worry about that. So I've changed nothing, and I don't need to realign. Though if I had to, I would push that W button. But I do want to check and make sure that there's no premature stop code on. So there's a tab here called Translated Protein Sequences. I click on that, and the default's OK, so I click Yes. All right, the letters and colors changed because now we have amino acids instead of nucleotides. 
The question marks are where there are ends in the nucleotides because it doesn't know what amino acid to put in that position. What I'm looking for is stop codons. So since this is coding sequence, I know there should be coding there should be stop sequence stop codons here at the end. And yes, there are. So stop codons are these asterisks in a gray box. So to check the that one's blue because it's selected. It's it's gray like the others. It was just selected. Um, so what I'm looking for is any gray boxes with asterisks in them anywhere else earlier here, whether in one or more strains. So it's probably easiest if I page across rather than pulling it across. Okay, the only gray boxes have question marks in them. They're fine. They're, that's just where our ends are. And no asterisks there. Okay, and that was the whole gene. It's shorter because it's only a third as long since each amino acid is three nucleotides. All right, so that was fine too. Before I do anything else, I need to go back to DNA sequence. And to indicate that this gene, all these strains have been reviewed, I want to save this with a different file name. So go to data, export alignment as FASTA. And so that it has a different file name, remember you rename it aligned gene name. So this is aligned ATP, ANTP, it FASTA files what we want. Save. And there is my saved aligned file. And I'm done analyzing the sequences for that gene. Uh, the third vi video in this series will show how to run the statistics on that saved file.